Hey guys, welcome back to the Outfox channel. I'm Michael Joyce and today we have another amazing video for you today. In this video we're controlling our attacker in a technique that we call the praying mantis. Now we know that female praying mantises are very aggressive to their male counterparts, sometimes ripping their head off. And we know Jenny can be aggressive at times too. But just like all of our training partners, we go easy because we want them to continue to be our training partner. Now, if you haven't seen the Valkyrie, which is the technique that we did just before this video, go back and watch it. The Valkyrie is a strong position that bridges the gap between our attacker and ourself. And it enables us to be in a strong, confident position in order to perform this technique and get the better of our opponent. If you haven't seen it, pause the video. Go back and see it. We'll wait. To those that left, welcome back. Now, what is the praying mantis and why do we need it? Well, as we know from the last video, the Valkyrie is a temporary barrier, right? And what happens in real violence, real world violence, is that it's ugly, fast, powerful, and unrelenting. The only way to make this manageable is to be able to control ourselves, control our opponent, and be able to control and manage the distance between us. Now remember this because this is very empowering. When you're confident enough in your technique, that is to say the way you move, your ability to maintain a non-collapsible frame, to redirect force and be successful, then you're not likely to hesitate. Hesitation comes from us not knowing what to do or what to do next. Now this is the perfect segue into practice and make practicing fun. Practice with your sibling, your friend, your spouse, because when you've practiced enough, you will act in the moment instinctively and be in a strong position. You'll have the upper hand. You'll have the advantage. Wow. Let's just take a moment and let that sink in, shall we? From the standard Valkyrie position, your right arm is across his collarbone with the edge of your forearm pressed like a sword against his neck, complete with a non-bending elbow. Then you are going to change your hand position at the wrist from extended to hooked, one around the neck, the other around the tricep, both elbows pulled downward as we drop our body weight downward, emphasizing a downward pull on the opponent's head. Remember to be kind to your training partner. Also remember that in a real life situation, this motion is and should be powerful and your drop sudden, jerking him downward and off balance. There's a common phrase in the martial arts, and that is, where the head goes, the body follows. When we pull downward on our attacker's head, his body tightens, and as a result, can more easily be thrown off balance. This tension arrives because of his fear of falling his body's natural instinct to regain balance, and maybe even a little bit of his fear of being beaten by a woman. But during this transition, he will likely not be attacking at this point, only surviving. Thus, a simple position quickly turns the tide. The predator walks in thinking he's the predator and you're his prey, but you switch it. You outfox him. By using the praying mantis and later other combative controls, you'll have the unique opportunity to pull him to the ground, create enough space to escape, or if you choose, deliver some damaging shots. Remember in training, aim for the back of the head or the neck, but only make soft contact. Exercise good body control and allow your fist to drop like a hammer as you drop your body weight downward. There are several attacker's responses that we can expect. Number one, him pushing forward, in which case we can move and redirect. Number two, him pulling back, by which we can adhere, push him back, making space to run or escape. Number three, dropping down to grab your leg. Now this is something that you should expect because as you pull him downward, your leg is the only thing that he can use to get you to the ground. Make sure you create the habit of moving it out of reach. Remember, we do not want to be pulled to the ground if we can help it. Number four, him trying to pry off your sword arm. In this case, we use heavy elbows. Or number five, 
slipping over your shield arm, also known as the high reach, thus creating a unique fox hug opportunity. Stop, stay back. Stop, stay back. Okay guys, thanks for watching. If you want any more information, if you want to hone your skills, if you want to review anything of, that we've gone over so far in the Outfox program, it's all on our website, outfox.com. Go to the blog, sign up for the free newsletter. It's all there in the description box below. Okay guys, stay safe, practice smart. And stay foxy. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Smash, smash, smash. <laughs> no, wait, wait, I was too ready. I was too ready for it. I was like going to parry it because I was just like, oh, it's going to hurt. Okay. <laughs> Is it hurting now? <laughs> it looked like you were really going to do it to me. <laughs> Saw the grit in your teeth. Okay, ready?